Hey guys, welcome to the next tutorial of ethical hacking and penetration testing via Kali Linux. So in the previous tutorial, we saw how exactly DDoS looks like and what is the basic concept behind that. So how you might be wondering how DDoS attacks are actually carried out. Basically, when you visit a website, you send them a request to deliver their content to you. When you send, what you send is actually a packet. Basically, it uh, takes more than just one packet. You need a lot of them. But still the bandwidth that you consume in requesting the server to send you some data is very little. In return, the data they send you is huge. This takes up server resources for which they pay you for, uh, which they pay for, sorry. And a legitimate view can easily earn more than the server cost on account of advertisement, etc. Uh, so companies buy server that can provide enough data transfer for its regular users. However, if the number of users suddenly increases, the server gives up. It goes down and since the company knows it, uh, it is under a DDoS attack or DOS attack, it just turns off the server so that it does not have to waste it monitor resources on a DOS and wait till a DOS stops. Now the modern computers and bandwidth, uh, we can alone, uh, we alone can easily pretend to be a thousand or even more US at once. While this is not a good for the server, it is not something that you can make it uh, happen. Your computer is not the only thing that gets better with time. The servers do too. However, if a lot of people like us uh, to go ahead and like me or you go ahead and do a DOS attack, it becomes a distributed DOS attack, that is distributed denial of service attack or DDoS. This can easily be fatal for a server and it's just like you go to a page and start refreshing it very fast, maybe a thousand times every second. Yeah, it may be uh, what you can say as a hyperbole that thousand times a second, but yes, that's exactly how DDoS works. And you're not the only one doing that, there are thousands others that are doing the same thing that is just think of it that thousand users refreshing the page thousand times in a second and they are doing this uh, for minutes and hours just think what will happen to the company's server so basically you guys are equivalent to more than a million users using the sites simultaneously and that's not something the server can take sites like google and facebook have strong servers and algorithms that can easily identify a dos and block the traffic from that ip address and the ip address itself but it's not just that the websites that get better and the black hat hackers too are improving day by day. This leaves a huge scope for understanding the DDoS attack and becoming an asset to one of these sites, the good, the bad and the ugly. So you might be wondering that uh, what exactly or is the major difference between DOS attack and DDoS attack. Uh, a DOS attack is denial of service attack. This means that one computer and one internet connection is used to flood a server with packets that is either TCP or the UDP packets that uh, use the datagram protocol. The point of such a denial of service attack is to overload the target server bandwidth and other resources. This will make the server inaccessible to others thereby blocking the website or whatever else is hosted there. A DDoS attack on the other hand in most respect, it is similar to a DOS attack, but results are much, much different. Instead of one computer and one internet connection to the DDoS attack, it utilizes many computers and many connections. The computers behind such an attack are often distributed and around the whole world and will be a part of what is known as a botnet. The main difference between a DDoS attack versus a DOS attack, therefore, is that the target server will overload by hundreds or even thousands of requests in the case of former that is the DOS attack as opposed to the DDoS attack of just one attacker in the case of the latter. Therefore it is much much or you can say it is impossible to withstand a DDoS attack as opposed to a normal DOS attack. The reason for that is because if it is a DDoS attack from one particular IP address then you may go ahead and uh, block the IP address for a specific period of time or for uh, lots of period of time. But uh, let's assume that there are thousands of users all around the world. We cannot go ahead and bl uh, keep blocking each and every other person because uh, let's say for example, I myself have uh, three laptops at my home and two cell phones. So if I go ahead and you do a distributed analysis attack, they can block five or 10 or maybe let's say 50 at a time. But blocking, uh, so just assume that if a person has two computers at his home or if he can just go to the cyber ca cyber cafe by using just going two dollars five dollars or maybe 10 rupees 15 rupees for an hour that would be more than sufficient for, for them to go ahead and kill a server or make them down and it's much harder or i can say it is impossible to go ahead and catch the people who actually did ddos attack the reason being that there are multiple ip addresses and you cannot actually assume whether it's a ddos attack actually or a number of people are trying to log in on your website at the same time. So it can be either of them. That So it's not necessary that uh, all the people are actually going ahead and uh, using your uh, or using their uh, denial of service attack uh, to go ahead and uh, attack you. 
it can be like let's say for example uh, i'll take an example of our irc ircTC website that's an indian website for uh, a railway railway ticket booking and air ticket booking so most of the time during april when people get a lot of holidays uh, you will see that the time uh, that the website is extremely slow or it will show you that it's under maintenance the reason for that is because first of all there are people booking lots of tickets second thing there are people who are continuously viewing whether their tickets are, are booked or they are still waiting and the third thing are that there are people in cyber cafes or other people or travelers who actually go ahead and sit on the website for no reason just so that they could block the other traffic and other people can go then go ahead and tell them the reason only reason was that because these people cannot get a booking on the railway the reason being that the site was slow so they go to these people who are already logged in and they give him some kind of extra fee like around uh, 50 rupees 100 or 200 rupees uh, extra so that uh, their tickets get booked and they, it does not go on waiting so at that point of time even the websites get down a lot a lot of time the reason being that multiple people are using it so you cannot actually go and distinguish between a distributed denial of service attack or just normal people using it at the same point of time. That's the reason it's most likely unable to stop and unable to detect or sometimes it is able to detect but it cannot uh, stop and that's why the people have to shut down their server. So yeah, that's the whole concept behind the DDoS attack and that is it for this tutorial. In the next tutorial, I'll be teaching you about the different levels of attack, the OSI models and stuff.